This week marks a watershed moment for special counsel Jack Smith's election case against Donald Trump. A three-judge panel will hear arguments on a question that's got some big stakes for democracy. Does the presidency confer, quote, absolute immunity, end quote, against prosecution for Trump's conduct while in office, as Trump's lawyers are arguing? Or is that claim not just constitutionally wrong, but also a license for future presidents to commit crimes while in office, as the Justice Department argues. And on the eve of a hearing on the question of whether Trump can be prosecuted for his actions while in office, we are learning incredible new details about what Donald Trump said on January 6th and what he did and did not do, thanks to testimony to the special counsel from some of Trump's closest aides, including his former deputy chief of staff, Dan Scavino. From that reporting, quote, sources said Scavino told, Scavino told Smith's investigators that as the violence began to escalate that day, Trump was, quote, not just interested in, end quote, in doing more to stop it. He was just not interested in doing more to stop it. Sources also said that the former Trump aide Nick Luna told federal investigators that when Trump was informed that then-Vice President Mike Pence had to be rushed to a secure location, Trump responded, so what? which Luna said, uh, sources said Luna saw as an unexpected willingness by Trump to let potential harm come to a longtime loyalist, his vice president. As the January 6th Select Committee showed, Trump saw the mob as, quote, my people, as Cassidy Hutchinson recalled him saying, and his aides tried to get him to do something, anything, to stop the violence. ABC News reports, according to what sources said, Scavino told Smith's team Trump was, quote, very angry that day. Not angry at what his supporters were doing to a pillar of American democracy, but steaming that the election was allegedly stolen from him and his supporters who were angry on his behalf. Scavino described it all as very unsettling, sources said. Scavino also told the special counsel that he was the one who posted the tweet from Trump's account telling the rioters to, quote, stay peaceful. Once again, reporting from ABC, Scavino printed out proposed messages for Trump to post on Twitter, hoping that Trump would approve them despite his reluctance to write such posts himself, sources said. The congressional probe found that even Trump's daughter, Ivanka, quote, rushed down to the Oval Office dining room, end quote, to convince her father that issuing a message could discourage violence, as the congressional report put it. More than a half hour after Trump was first pressed to take some sort of action, Trump finally let Scavino post a message on Trump's Twitter account telling supporters to support law enforcement and to stay peaceful. And that's where we start this uh, today with the national investigative reporter for The Washington Post, Carol Lennig, plus the deputy, form, uh, deputy assistant attorney general and former United States attorney, Harry Lippman, and former U.S. senator and co-host of MSNBC's How to Win 2024 podcast, Claire McCaskill. Welcome to all of you. Thank you for being with us. Claire, good to have you back um, in the mix with us. Let's start with you. It's... it's um, on one hand, it's surprising. We're still getting new information. There's still, believe it or not, things about January 6th that we didn't completely know. But none of it is, is good for Donald Trump. It all sort of doubles down on what we believe Donald Trump was and wasn't doing that day and his consciousness of how bad what was going on at the Capitol actually was. Well, I got to tell you, Ali, I don't think uh, anybody should be surprised at this testimony. Uh, we know he, he loves to watch his televisions instead of actually do the work of being a president. We know he was sitting in that dining room right off the Oval Office, watching television, seeing in real time the violence that was unfolding, police officers being attacked, and we know he did nothing. And f frankly, we've been saying for years now, he was enjoying it. He thought it was great. He thought this is exactly what needed to happen. He had no problem with Pence being threatened. He's the one that was calling for him to be held accountable and calling him a coward and doing all the things that, that incited that mob to do the things they did that day, including chanting, hang Mike Pence. So I, I don't think any of this is surprising. You know what's shocking to me about it is Dan Scavino is still with Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, think about that for a minute. Imagine, I, I think about the rooms I've been in when uh, bad things were happening around the world and powerful people were in the room trying to figure out the best way forward. And I'm trying to imagine people in that room watching what that man was doing when he had an obligation to stop the violence and instead relishing it and still standing by him. What kind of guy is this? Yeah, That's and, what I find shocking about it. And Harry, uh, look, it, it sounds like a lot of these people are, are in their testimony, truthful though it may be, are sort of saying, wasn't me. We were all trying to tell this guy to, to slow things down. And they're all piling on on the fact that this idea that Donald Trump was not aware of the level of danger that was underway at that time and to some degree actively disregarded it and, in fact, in some other testimony, uh, may have, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what the legal term is, but uh, allowed the, the, the anger that, was, that could have resulted in remarkable harm to, uh, to his own vice president is becoming clearer and clearer. Yeah, that's right. And point one, of course, is we know the difference in a guy like Scavino between people who would thumb their nose at the committee but couldn't for Jack Smith. So the extra muscle of the DOJ means we're going to see more evidence. Look, I think Claire is right that it's of a piece with the public record. But if you think of it through the vantage point of the prosecution, the one thing that Trump could maybe try through um, surrogates to claim a trial is it took him by surprise. He never knew this would right. happen. You've heard claims of that. It seems dubious, but you take Scavino and put him on the stand. Anyone who had that uh, attitude would, of course, have been mortified and done everything they could to stop it, not rejoiced at it, say, who cares about Pence, et cetera. So in that sense, while it's of a piece with what we know, it is very very powerful evidence if you look at it through the prism of what Jack Smith has to prove at trial. It pretty much is a nail in the coffin of Trump's intent. Uh, Carol, I, I want to just remind people, this is stuff that people have seen before, but uh, of Cassidy Hutchinson um, telling, uh, talking about what happened when Mark Meadows, her boss, uh, found out. That, that people are calling for for Mike Pence to be hanged and and what uh, what the response was. Let's just let's just play that. I remember Pat saying something to the effect of Mark, we need to do something more. They're literally calling for the vice president to be effing hung. And Mark had responded something to the effect of you heard him, Pat. He thinks Mike deserves it. He doesn't think they're doing anything wrong. To which Pat said something this is effing crazy. We need to be doing something more. Pat being Pat Cipollone. Uh, Carol, again, we, we knew much of this. Uh, obviously, we knew that from Cassidy Hutchinson. But as you put meat on these bones, what, you're, you're, what seems to be happening is Donald Trump's uh, ability to say, I was not aware of what was going on or what people's intentions are is melting away. That's right, Allie. And I feel like, you know, Claire and Harry have hit the nail on the head. It's of a piece. We are not surprised because, I mean, in a book that Phil Rucker, my co-author, and I wrote at the end of 2020, forgive me, in the beginning of 2021, we summarized this final year and this moment. Every single person that was with Donald Trump that day, of course, we didn't know about Scavino, was uh, shocked that the president seemed to basically put himself in his TV dining room and watch like he was popping popcorn in his mouth. Interested and, and perhaps irritated that he had lost the election, but certainly uh, encouraged by the outpouring of people who were violently trying to take matters into their own hands and block the peaceful transfer power, which is what Donald Trump had been trying to do for two months since finding out that he had lost the election. I also think it, it's, it's really important to recognize the gradations of each individual who was dealing with this. Let's go through a couple of them. You rightly pointed out what Pat Cipollone's reaction was. We've got to do effing more, as Cass Cassidy Hutchinson describes it. Um, you have Mark Meadows, the chief of staff, sort of shaking his head and said, I, I can't get him to do anything. You've got Ivanka Trump, as we reported in our book, you know, I alone can fix it. Ivanka Trump going down repeatedly, trying to get her father to take some sort of action, and ultimately, in a way, succeeding because he he tapes uh, after multiple unsuccessful and unacceptable tries. He tapes a recording to his 
viewers uh, later in the afternoon saying that they should stand down, although he thanks them uh, and tells them that they're great people. Every single individual who came in contact with the president that day, his most close advisors, his tightest people, his daughter, wanted him to do something, and he resisted, resisted doing something because, as we all know, as he told us uh, when we went to interview Donald Trump in April of 2021, I wanted what the rioters wanted. I wanted what they wanted, which was to stop this election from being affirmed.